What is going on, Prestonians? Welcome back to another perspective. Now, this is a perspective that I could talk about all day. But for the sake of time, let's just hit a couple points on Green Lantern. Let's get started. So this is one of my favorite books in the whole Green Lantern collection in the superhero room celebrating 75 years. I'm playing with some lighting so hopefully you guys can read that and it's not the some of the lights aren't too shiny. But I love this because you get to see like the first Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and you get to just kind of see, then it goes into Hal Jordan, but you also get to see like how art changes throughout the years and throughout the decades and kind of becomes a little bit different or even just how they like print. Uh, let's see, Wonder Woman, Batman, Green, uh, I'm gonna get one that like is for real Green Lantern. Uh, there you go, right? And so I love looking at this book and reading this book because there is a whole bunch of debate out there about like who's the greatest Green Lantern and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about that but we're going to talk about just the Earth Lanterns. All right, just the protectors of Sector 2814. That's the sector where Earth is. We're not going to talk about any of the other species or aliens like Kilowog or Mogo. Maybe a different perspective. And so for the sake of time, we're going to look at four. Uh, five, really. So we're going to look at the very first, Alan Scott. We're going to look at Jessica Cruz, John Stewart, Kyle Rayner, and then Hal Jordan. Uh, there's also Guy Gardner and Simon Baz, but for the sake of time, we're going to kind of just push those guys to the side. Um, but let's talk about the very first Green Lantern because you can't discount the gr first Green Lantern. His name is Alan Scott. Now, his power ring is based more on the magic realm. He got his power from a green meteor that crashed into the earth and the cool thing about his ring being more magic in the first early like earlier comics it allowed him to do all sorts of crazy things okay guys he is able to shape shift uh, and turn himself into an envelope and he meld himself to a bad guy um, it used to uh, it would allow him to phase kind of like the flash does and walk through walls uh, it's pre it's pretty awesome. All right, guys, and Al Scott is introduced to us in the Golden Age of Comics, and then when we hit the Silver Age of Comics, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, um, that's where it, it changes from the more of the from the magic to the more of the science fiction realm. So, comic books in general, Green Lantern, even Superman, Justice League, kind of took a a break kind of took a downhill in popularity um, and then when they came back and resurfaced we have the Silver Age of comics and that's where they reintroduced us to Green Lantern and we get Hal Jordan the first human uh, Earth Green Lantern chosen by the ring uh, in this more science fiction realm a test pilot all of that kind of stuff and we'll talk about Hal Jordan in just a second but we see the resurface of the lanterns in 1959. So let's talk real quick about John, Kyle, Jessica. So you have John Stewart. Now this is the guy that most people are going to know, um, especially if um, like growing up, like when I was a teenager and that kind of stuff because of the Justice League animated series and Justice League Unlimited, John Stewart was the Green Lantern that worked with the Justice League at that time. John Stewart is introduced to us in 1971 and he is a former architect, which is really cool because his constructs are really detailed with the pillars and the braces and the rivets and just the attention to detail. Now a construct, a construct is what is created by the ring, the beam of light or energy that comes from the power ring that the wielders, the users, the wearers use to create something. That is what's called a construct. So John's constructs are just more detailed as were like how Jordan's were more kind of 
simple and straight to the point, but hang on. See how I just keep kind of keep going back to how? Just hang on, hang on. So then you get Kyle Rayner. Now Kyle is really cool because the central battery where all the all the power rings get their get their power from um, and everyone's personal lantern that they use to power their ring was destroyed. And so the last remaining guardian escaped to Earth with the last power ring and gave it to Kyle. Now Kyle is an artist. So his suit looks a little different, his mask looks a different because he what he changed it up and created it. And the things that he makes, his constructs, um, are really like really creative, really imaginative, beautiful, because it's that artist side of him. Uh, he actually was the only Green Lantern for some time. And the cool thing about Kyle's story is he went on a quest to harness every emotion, every emotional spectrum, uh, every color of the power rings of the lanterns. So each lantern gets their power from some sort of emotion. So green is willpower, self-control. Red is rage. Yellow is fear. Orange is greed. Pink is love or the star sapphires. Indigo is compassion. Blue is hope. And so Kyle goes on a mission to overcome and to master all of these emotions and then he's able to wear all of the rings and then he is turned into the white lantern which ring is life itself and becomes one of the most powerful people beings in the universe and the white ring in comics is like one of the most powerful tools or gadgets a hero can use or wield. Then we have Jessica Cruz. Jessica Cruz is the first female human Green Lantern. Um, and she is really awesome because with Green Lanterns, the whole idea is that they keep going. They push through. They don't give up. They have the willpower to overcome great fear. Now, Jessica, she has witnessed some bad things. She even witnessed uh, two of her friends uh, life in life ending by a bad guy and so she has this anxiety like this crippling anxiety and she hates to go outside like she has this agoraphobia but when she call, hears that someone needs help or gets a call from the justice league or whatnot she does the right thing and she goes out she suits up she puts the ring on and she starts using her ring and becoming more confident and the more confident she becomes the stronger her constructs are and even superman himself has said man i am impressed by jessica and the funny thing is in comic books jessica just says well you know because of my anxiety i actually overcome great fear every day just by getting out of bed all right now it is the time that we have been waiting for well okay maybe just me but now it is time to talk about hal jordan so hal jordan when the comic books resurface is now the first human to wield the power ring and his willpower his ability to overcome fear his self-control is un matched guys it is like a top notch willpower how jordan was introduced during that silver age of comics in 1959 kind of like we talked about a little bit earlier with the more the sci-fi base the ring is chose chosen wow the ring chooses you you're transported to the planet of oa you meet with the guardians of the universe you're trained and all that kind of stuff and then you're sent out to patrol protect and fight He's a member of the Justice League, the Green Lantern Corps, and then there was a time in comics where he teamed up with just Green Arrow for a series or for a run, which is pretty awesome. His willpower has um, made him so strong and it has allowed him to create some really strong and awesome constructs. Um, but still kind of simple like we've talked about earlier. So he, it, he just thinks a matter of fact, uh, which I really like because I'm more of a matter of fact, logical kind of guy thinker. And so, oh, I need to catch something. Let me real quick make a glove. Oh, I need to stop somebody. Let me put up a brick wall they can run into or let me 
build a cage around them. More of those like just simple constructs. He has created an arrow strong enough to pierce the, the impenetrable skin of a bad guy named Mongol. Uh, he has created a chain and a harness to wrap around the earth that Superman then gets into and then he flies the earth out of the way and then puts the earth back. He has um, defeated and commanded Necron, the leader of the Black Lanterns. He has fought and defeated the Yellow Lanterns, the Red Lanterns of Rage, the Orange Lantern of Greed. He's worked alongside with the Indigo Tribe of Compassion and the Blue Lanterns of Hope. I mean, I love Green Lantern in general, guys. I love the storyline of Green Lantern. I love the creativity. So, like, the whole multiverse that DC has created, put that to the side. And just the Green Lantern verse itself is massive and huge with all the different color, all the different power rings, all the different planets and species and people. It is incredible and i love the power rings i have a two like more than one collection of power of power rings uh the power rings just they allow you to do some really cool things um you know some big things like a jet or a train or godzilla to more simple things like a wall a table and a chair there's one comic book where um Hal Jordan and Barry Allen, who become pretty good friends in the Justice League, uh, need to have a little chat of why things are still going on uh, down, down below. So Green Lantern takes Flash up into the sky with him and then just creates a table and a bar stool and a chair. He, Green Lantern floats because of his ring and his suit. Um, and then Barry is able to sit at the stool and sit at the table and they're just able to talk about life and about Iris and Carol and, and some cool things like that. Green Lanterns can fly but sometimes you need a, you have a need for speed and so Hal Jordan uses a, a motorcycle from time to time. Um, in the earlier in one of the earlier comics because Hal Jordan's willpower is unmatched his willpower is so strong he was actually able to use the energy in his power ring to time travel. Yeah, like to travel through time, like decades and decades and decades uh, because, and he was the only one who could do that because his willpower was so strong. Okay, see how I could just kind of keep going and I could talk about Green Lanterns forever, but sadly we are out of time today, my friends. Thank you for listening. I know everybody has their own opinions and their perspectives. So thank you so much for listening to mine. Do you have a favorite color lantern? Drop it in the comments. Do you have a favorite earth lantern? Jessica, John, Kyle, Guy, Simon, Hal? Uh, drop that in the comments. I would love to hear about your perspectives and who you like the most. Catch you guys in the next video.